In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Seat of Wisdom, Saint Joseph, Saint Ignatius of Antioch, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Today we celebrate Saint Ignatius of Antioch, who was an early martyr of the Church. It says in the little bio about Saint Ignatius that he was a convert to the faith and a disciple of St. John the Evangelist, which would mean that he is a very important witness in the church because he is one who has contact with the apostles themselves. St. John Chrysostom says that St. Peter appointed him Bishop of Antioch, which see he governed for 40 years. The saint longed to shed his blood for Christ, but the opportunity was not granted him during the persecution under Domitian. While the short reign of Nerva lasted, the church was at peace, but under Trajan, persecution broke out anew. And in the year 107, the emperor came to Antioch. St. Ignatius was seized and brought before him, Having confessed Christ, he was condemned to be taken in chains to Rome, where he was exposed to the wild beasts. During this last journey, he was welcomed by the faithful of Smyrna, Troas, and other places along the way. He arrived in Rome just as the public spectacles in the amphitheater were drawing to a close. The faithful of the city came out to meet him. He was at once hurried to the amphitheater, where two fierce lions immediately devoured him. He ended his saintly life by a glorious death, exclaiming, May I become agreeable bread to the Lord. His remains were carried to Antioch, where they were interred. In the reign of Theodosius, they were transferred to a church within the city, and at present they are venerated in the city of Rome. During his long journey, he addressed seven epistles to various congregations in which As a disciple of the apostles, he testifies to the dogmatic character of apostolic Christianity. So St. Ignatius shows us that the early Christians had a set of beliefs that they followed, that that was part of the teaching of the church from its very beginnings. Those who think that dogmas were somehow contrived later on in the Middle Ages or sometime after, The church has always been dogmatic from the very first days. Um, The other thing that St. Ignatius, when he was writing these letters to various congregations, he was writing to them not to, uh, well, he was writing to them, encouraging them not to uh, intercede on his behalf to have his life spared because he wanted to give his life in witness to Christ. And he saw martyrdom as a gift as an opportunity, as a grace from God. And he did not want to be denied this opportunity to meet his maker, to meet the Lord who he loved and wanted to serve. Uh, If you have that kind of supernatural outlook, as St. Ignatius did, he was like what our Lord said in the first reading. He did not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. That was what guided St. Ignatius. He was not living for this world. He was not serving his carnal desires. This is the thing that we must always keep in mind, is that there are many people who think that nature, you know, they say, oh, do what comes naturally. You know, we're just doing what comes naturally. Well, nature by itself is not perfect and is not whole. Man, when he was first created in the garden, was created in grace. And if you don't have grace, and all you do is have the nature, which is intends to the flesh, you have corruption, as St. Paul writes. That man, to be fully complete, needs God's grace. And to be guided by the Spirit will lead man to his 
true destiny, which is St. Um, Thomas Aquinas reminds us, man has an end by nature, which is, man by nature has an end by nature, which is beyond his nature. And we can only reach that, that true end that we have if we live according to the Spirit. And uh, to truly live to the highest possible uh, expectations that our human nature can do, it needs God's grace. And St. Ignatius realized that, you know, in order to live according to the Spirit, he had to mortify himself, had to do penance. And because he was a penitential man, he had brought his flesh under control, and he was not afraid of suffering. So that when the ultimate mortification, death, dying to himself, dying for Christ, he was ready to embrace it and saw it as a great gift and as entrance into eternity. This is where the saints have that true vision that comes from faith, that light of faith, to see this world not in its materialistic terms only, but to see it with a higher purpose that comes from the light of faith. And then in the gospel today, our Lord is warning about hypocrites and about people who are not authentic in one sense, because the Pharisees were very hypocritical. They were doing things for the, for the applause and for the notice of people, but there was no true love of God or love of man in their charitable works. They were just doing all these things, giving tithes to the synagogue or to the temple and and loving the seat of honor in synagogues for their own um, for their own egos, they were they were doing religious things or what appeared to be uh, good things, but only for wrong motives. They weren't authentic. They were uh, frauds. And this is one thing God does not like: is people who are frauds, pretending to be something they are not. Our Lord wants us to be simple, not duplicitous. To be truly what you see is what you get. And to, to truly be simple though, in a good way, to be simple and truthful, to be honest and humble, that is a gift from God. And he said very strong words to them, woe. Woe to you Pharisees, and woe to you lawyers, woe to you scholars, because they were always taking care of themselves and not really taking care or putting other people's cares or their needs ahead of their own. And in one sense, the hypocrites today and those who are not authentic would be those who claim to be Catholic but define it on their terms and not on God's or the church's. Uh, that's one of those categories of not be, uh, being authentic that our Lord would not be happy with and is not happy with, that we need to truly be what we profess to be, and we need to do our religious duties for the higher purpose, for a truly spiritual, truly a uh, higher motive, and to truly do it for love of God and love of neighbor, and not uh, of a social convenience or some kind of um, uh, recognition. There are some people who use religion, they use it for other purposes than their sanctification and for the glory of God. They use it for their own uh, motives egos, whatever it may be, and religion then becomes just another expression of their own um, tastes. Let us pray today that we will truly be authentic, that we'll truly be what we ought to be in the eyes of God, that we act always 
with the motive and intention of being pleasing to God, not pleasing ourselves or pleasing someone else, but if we act always to please God, to serve Him, and whatever we do, like St. Ignatius of Antioch, we will be truly uh, living according to the Spirit, and we will truly be ready to meet whatever trials or tribulations that come our way, and we'll be ready to see them as opportunities to give witness to Christ and opportunities to, um, to, to, to eventually someday meet our Lord in person. We will not fear death or any kind of suffering if we have been living according to the Spirit, if we've been living with a supernatural uh, intent and motive and with a supernatural end in sight for heaven is our goal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.